the big scandal here in the music world in the Bay Area, you know, during the Super Bowl, instead of picking this local group, which is the greatest group on earth, uh, you know, Metallica to play. They they got this shoddy group from England, you know, that could be playing in, in Buckingham Palace for the Queen. Boring. Then they got that that stormtrooper group there with the hats on. Whatever. Now it's snowing in New York. Kids are glad they're home with their fathers and mothers. Kids don't care about income. They don't know anything about money. They know that their father's home in a snowstorm. They're happy. I remember the few years, the few years I lived at home. I, I was like you know, Charles Dickens' child. But the years that I lived at home till I left, when it snowed and my father was snowed and couldn't go to work, I was happy. Little did I know we could have starved to death. My mother didn't work. She was a house a homemaker. My father worked. He went to the store seven days a week ground him himself into dust to make a living. It snowed. He had to stay there. Then they, the, the, the snow plows, they plow you in. That's all. They had to clean the street. They buried you in 10 feet of snow. Look at this story. Cruise ship runs into terrifying storm on high seas. That's a story. People go to sea for an adventure. So the adventure is the ship bounced around a little bit in a storm. What they expect? A bus with propellers? That's why I don't go on cruise ships. I used to go on on ocean liners when they were ocean liners rather than cruise ships. So to me, to go on a ship, which is a hotel with propellers, and you can't get away from the Muzak and the gambling and the morons running, rappelling up and down a wall, what are you on a ship for? Go to Disneyland. What do you need to do that on a ship for? They don't even smell the salt air. The windows are closed. If someone goes out and smells salt air, they call a lawyer in New York and say, I'm sorry, I smelled the salt air and I think I got sick. It ruined my jewelry. What a world I'm living in. Everything's false. Used to be called air sots. It's over already. The second stop set. How could this be going on? Year of the monkey begins with celebrations and prayers. That's my problem. A year of the monkey. You want me to talk about the year of the monkey in America? Take a look at the Republican campaign. Take a look at the, the Democrat campaign. Where are we? Oh, at the bottom of the hour, we have Tea Party Patriot Citizen Fund to talk about why they like Ted Cruz. Then Trump at the top of the next hour. What more do you want on a Monday? Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. They play instruments and I play the microphone. Welcome back to the Savage Nation. So they're in New Hampshire now. As you know, tomorrow night is the big deal. I don't know why it's a big deal. It's another state that is not demographically representative of America. It's like we're living in 1814. You know, the motto of New Hampshire is live free and get high. Now, don't go for the, the, the license plate. Live, live free or die. Right. Sure. That's really New Hampshire today. It's live free and get high. That's the state of New Hampshire. I don't know what they're pandering to them for. I don't get that. So with us right now is a wonderful person, Jenny Beth Martin, of the Tea Party Patriots Citizen Fund, and they're supporting Ted Cruz. So that's why I had them on. Jenny Beth Martin, welcome to the Savage Nation. Thanks for having me. All right, look, you support your candidate, Ted. Ted's a wonderful guy, but my, my feelings, as I've expressed a hundred times on this show, is that although he's politically very smart, he's very astute, I don't think he's electable because of the the, the situation in America. Is it's, a lot of it's based upon persona and looks. That's what I feel. But why do you support Ted Cruz? What What are the reasons? Well, the our our supporters across the country vo voted on who we would support, and we went through a four round rounds of balloting in our endorsement process. We what I learned through this process and listening to. Countless people talking to me, emails, uh, communications from comments in our balloting process is our people are looking for someone who will stand up for the principles of the Tea Party movement and the principles that made America great. We stand for personal freedom, economic freedom, and a debt-free future. And Ted Cruz has proven time after time he is willing to stand with us. He's not afraid to back down. And he's going to do what's right for America based on our principles and our Constitution. It's a good answer, and I agree that he's a good man and has the right answers. My position is a little different, and so we'll disagree on that. But here's a big question. If someone else wins the primary, let's say Donald Trump, will the Tea Party go along with that, or are they going to boycott him? 
Well, I we have not asked our supporters that specifically. What I know from past elections is that our supporters do not want someone who is going to be um, like Obama or Hillary or Bernie Sanders. So I... I, I think yeah, but that, I think that's unfair to say Donald Trump's going to be like Hillary or Bernie Sanders. I mean, that, that's ludicrous. Wait, say that again. I, I, he is. I said, you're, you're, you're comparing Donald Trump to, to, to Obama? That's kind of ludicrous. No, no, no. I was not. You misunderstood me. What I'm saying is that our supporters, I think at the end of the day, I will have to check with them because ours is a grassroots organization, but they're going to want the person who can defeat the liberal socialist Democrats. And I think that that means that that we'll look at who comes out of the Republican primary with that in mind. It, it, Any, but from my point of view, any Republican is better than any Democrat at this point. You've got a choice between Lenin and Marx on the other side. Any of the Republicans, no matter how moderate they are, stand for the the opposition to that, by and large, not entirely. But that's what I'm saying. What I'm hoping for is that Tea Party groups, especially yours, which is so so prominent, will not boycott Trump should he turn out to be the, the primary winner. That's what I'm hoping. Our Tea Party groups haven't boycotted anyone in elections, so I don't think that that's something we have to be concerned with. What I'd be far more concerned with is what does the Republican establishment do? They have a record of... Uh, when a conservative is nominated against their person going and telling voters to vote for the Democrats. You've never heard us doing something like that. We stand for our principles. Oh, no, 100 percent right. 100 percent right. The Republican establishment is what they are, the rhinos, uh, check pants Republicans, country club Republicans, Better Business Bureau Republicans. We know who they are. They stand for nothing. We understand that, and they're very dangerous. They're a far greater threat to this republic than people may, may imagine. So at the end of the day, Cruz is an intellectual giant in terms of the Republicans. He knows all the answers, and he really means them. And you chose him because he uh, is, is that. But many say that Cruz is not very well liked in Washington. And I'm asking you, how can he win a general election, number one, when even a Republican Congress won't work with him? Well, I think that the, the thing is that... Um, I, a lot of times the problems in Washington are because of the Republican Congress and the Democrat Congress. So the fact that he isn't very well liked in Washington isn't as much of a concern to me as his ability to go and communicate to voters across this country what we stand for and how more freedom in this country gets us all what we want in our own lives. It allows us to pursue the American dream and allows us to do so without the government interfering in every aspect of our life. And See, I agree with Ted Cruz on every position except one. I think he's totally wrong. I don't know who's advising him, but when he makes Russia our enemy, he's making a drastic error. What is he, see, on that, he agrees with Hillary. It seems to me he's being advised by the neocons who got us into Iraq by making Putin the greatest enemy on the earth. Putin is our greatest natural ally, I would think, against ISIS. Um, when it comes to national security, we haven't been as involved in national security issues, so I, I can't answer on that. I can say that as a, a mom of, of twins living in Georgia, I'm very concerned, and I know people around me are very concerned about the threat of ISIS and how we're going to to defeat the terrorists who, who mean to do us harm and mean to do harm to civilians. Well, that's why I say Putin is the only one taking it to, the, to them. Putin started bombing them, and then, and, and then uh, Obama made believe he followed. So why would Ted Cruz attack Putin? It makes no sense unless he's being misadvised. And the only advice I would give your group is to look carefully into his advisors, because I would think that they're the same people who advised Bush. That's what worries me about Ted Cruz. Um, I, I I can say that I know um, that from his his Senate side, where I've worked, um, where we as our C4 organization, not our super PAC, ha have worked on legislative issues. The people who've been in his Senate office are conservatives who want who want to uphold the Constitution and are willing to stand up to. No, no, I understand, but I'm talking about foreign policy. He's 100 percent wrong on that. You know, he's off on that, in my opinion, but. I think that the Tea Party groups have to understand that we don't live in a vacuum. We live in a world. 
And, of course, domestic issues take priority. But I think the biggest issue in any polling is national security. And on that issue, Ted Cruz is wrong to attack uh, um, <clears throat> Putin and say Russia's our greatest enemy. He agrees with Hillary Clinton on that. Even Bernie Sanders says we should work with Russia. But, look, we don't have to agree on that. I want to thank you for doing the work you do. And Jenny Beth Martin of the uh, Tea Party Patriot Citizen Fund, thank you very much for being with us and expressing your support for Ted Cruz today on The Savage Nation. And I wish you great luck in all of your future endeavors. Thank you, Michael. Thank you very much. I know they like me. The group likes me. I mean, I don't, you know, broadcast that. I happen to know that they like me because I've been around longer than anybody in terms of borders, language, and culture. They know that as well. Uh, they may, you know, they know that there's a lot of Johnny-come-latelys. But the thing is, okay, they know that I've been around long enough to uh, be be vetted. And my positions haven't changed since 1994. Borders, language, culture, period, end of story. So I don't have to pass a litmus test. Now let's move away from this for a while. Let's go to what you really want to talk about, because I know it's the day after the Super Bowl and people still are eating the peanuts and the leftover cheese doodles, whatever's in the house. You know, they want to relive it. I don't blame it. It's like a big spectacle, the Roman arena and all of that. It's wonderful to watch people in such great shape do such wonderful things. I'm not particularly interested in it, but I know some intelligent people who are, so I'm not going to sit here and knock it like an idiot. A hundred million people watched it. I mean, that's what the world likes. People are obsessed with sports. There's no denying it. And uh, I think that's what people want to talk about. Truthfully, I did not watch the game. You put a Bible next to me. I watched about a minute in the first half and a minute in the second half to see who was winning. I, was, I, was in, I wasn't interested. It was like a spring day out here. I went on a bicycle ride. I went on a walk. I took a ride in my old Jag. That's what I did. Right. I took it for, for gas. It sat in the garage for two months. The 1970 XKE. It ran beautifully. So you say, why'd you waste your time? I didn't waste my time. It felt nice. Teddy and I had a nice ride. Then I came back and I saw that the A's were fighting the B's and the B's were ahead of the A's and the cheese heads were ahead of the knockwurst heads. You know, it didn't mean much to me. There wasn't even a home team. I don't even understand what they were getting so excited in San Francisco. I have an apartment in downtown San Francisco that's a block away from uh, Hula Hoop City, whatever they were calling it. What was it called? Hula Hoop City, whatever. Million people went down here for what? I don't know what they were doing there. But that's what I'm saying. Now, you think that that crowd knows anything about foreign policy? Do you think they know anything about domestic policy? All they know is they stuff their face with chicken wings and watch television. A billion point three is the number, right, Robert? 1.3 billion chicken wings were sold on Super Bowl Sunday. So let's see. If they weren't cloning chicken somewhere in a laboratory in, in Japan or China to produce the wings, maybe they're just cloning wings now with no chicken. Maybe they can grow a wing without a chicken, for all I know, already with batter on it and poison. That means there's, take it in half. You could do that without a calculator. What's that, 670,000 or something like that? Chickens had to be killed for those wings. Okay, the question is not how many chickens were killed. Where did they come from? It's not 670,000. Do you know the number? I want you to take a billion and cut it in half. Cut a billion in half. Make it easy for yourself. 500 million or so chickens had to be killed for the Super Bowl. Doesn't that make you sad? Doesn't that depress you that 500 million little chickens had to go to the, to the had their heads cut off so you could eat a wing stuffed into the, into the grease? Who eats that stuff? I swear as God is my witness. Now this is a true another truth. Give me the Bible. Give me the Bible. I'm putting it right here on this desk. In my entire transition through earth, my whole life, all the decades I have lived, I've eaten maybe a total of nine chicken wings. It's when I was a uh, working for a publishing company. I had to go on the road, and I would be in a hotel, and they had the free food before, you know, the, the happy hour. I looked, I mean, even I, and I'm a, I'm a buffet guy. I wouldn't eat them. I would try one. I don't know how anyone eats them. But I, I would, like, take it, you know, like, you put it, and you don't want to be, you know, rude. You spit it back in a napkin, and you, like, gently, like, you put it behind you, throw it into a, a trash can. Who can eat that stuff? This is the mentality that watch Beyonce. That's all I can say to you. Whoever enjoys chicken wings on Super Bowl Sunday like the entertainment. They're about matched in quality. Charles on WFTL in Fort Lauderdale on this great program and this wonderful day. It's snowing in New York. It's springtime in San Francisco. What's on your mind? 
I didn't like this the halftime show. I, I felt 